My name is David Kaczynski. In 1995, my wife Linda and I faced an ethical dilemma when we read the Unabomber's Manifesto and began to suspect that the person who had written it, in other words, the person who had been responsible for killing three people and sending 16 bombs over 17 years, at that point the most wanted person in America, was my older brother, Theodore. We anguished over what to do. We felt we were in a situation where any decision we made could lead to somebody's death. If we did nothing, uh, some innocent person might pick up a bomb. Um, we would go through life knowing that that person had died because we had failed to act. That seemed like an untenable choice. On the other hand, it was horrible to think of turning in my brother and the prospect that he could face execution if he was, in fact, convicted of, of these terrible crimes. I didn't know how I could go through life with my brother's blood on my hands. Ultimately, we decided that uh, there was one thing we could control. We could stop the Unabomber's violence if Ted was indeed the person responsible. And then we would have to harness our good intentions, our faith, our best efforts to trying to save his life. It's interesting. You know, over the years, I've, I've met many families impacted by violence or loss or trauma of one kind or another. And it, it seems almost to break 50-50. It's like half of the relationships, half of the families have extreme stress, sometimes leading to divorce. And half the families really sort of rally and become closer. My mother loved both of her sons, Ted and, and me, with all her heart. I just didn't know how a mother would negotiate this. How, how could she handle this horrible thing? And I, I thought she might fall apart. And instead, she was incredibly strong and incredibly insightful and loving. So I think I had the good fortune of two very strong women in my life, my mother Wanda, my wife Linda, and the three of us all together um, gave tremendous support to each other. And it was through that you know, sort of family support, that trust, that shared process of ethical decision-making and ultimately healing that um, kind of saved my sanity. I think the thing that I learned was that Good intentions really matter. You know, you can't necessarily control the outcomes. The most important thing is to, to focus and, uh, and make your intentions the best they can possibly be, which is not ultimately self-protection, but, but benefit of other pe people, including those you know and those you don't know. We hoped and prayed that Ted's life might be spared because Ted has a very serious mental illness. Um, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, and I think we place, placed our faith in those good intentions. And we sort of had a mission to work against the capital punishment statute that was then on the books in New York State. And we actually developed an incredible coalition, including many v murder victim family members who opposed the death penalty. And, you know, the death penalty ended in New York State. Um, it was a whole combination of circumstances. No, no one person or one organization um, accomplished that, but we were part of it. And that felt that felt meaningful, and in the end, the outcome was as, as, as good as it could be. Um, the bombing stopped. Ted was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. I do believe that we probably saved his life as well as the lives of who knows how many innocent people. Well, for people facing ethical dilemmas, but for, for other people affected by other kinds of trauma, other kinds of tragedy, in general, my advice would be to say that there, there is a danger of sort of collapsing into your own pain. If your focus is on self and your own hurt, as pervasive, as, as horrible as that pain might be, um, the chances are that you're going to kind of collapse into yourself. One thing that's, that really is true about human life, and you begin to see this when you live through one of these tragedies, is that we're, we're tremendously interconnected. We're connected in ways we see, in ways we don't see. That really trying to benefit and help others ultimately ends up helping yourself. You know, the only way to climb out of that hole of despair is to reach out to someone else and offer them comfort, assistance, just words of encouragement. I think there is a tendency in our culture to sort of um, glorify violence because violence has the illusion of being powerful. But in fact, it's futile. I mean, you never can make the world fundamentally better through acts of violence. Um, 
On the other hand, love and compassion, they maybe are more subtle, they're slower acting, but they're in extremely powerful. I do believe, and this is part of forming good intentions, that this trying to nurture in oneself and in others attitudes of love and compassion is, is really the answer to the, all of the problems we face.